today we are going to go ahead and set up our character's base class that is going to essentially be the same as our current World of War character class. But we're going to go ahead and scrap that and just kind of have organize everything how we want to. So that way it's nice and neat and it's how we're going to start really structuring and organizing our files. So what we can do is we can go ahead and right click new C++ class. It's going to be a character and I'm going to give it the name character base. Make it public and make it under the folder player. So it's going to be our base game folder public or private player then the name of the class. So let's go ahead and create the class. Now because I'm on engine version 4.24 or even later than this pod probably, this compile is going to fail because we have to include the directory a little bit differently. So if we open our character base, you will see that it cannot find the character base.h. The reason for this is we have to go by the different path. So in this case, it's going to be the name of the project, which is war.war. Go to public, player, character base.h and this will fix it all. So give it a second for IntelliSense to pick it up and we're good to go. So I wanna go ahead and remove our tick functions because we are no, we are not gonna need them and start moving the functionality from War to War character over to here. So what I'm gonna do is start copying everything. So from this first section, we're going to move it over. We're not going to worry about doing any sort of organizing or anything. And make this protected. And move our constructor to the top. Just like so. Keep it a little bit neater. Then we need to work our way down to all this stuff. I'm not going to bother describing it. Waste time. All right. Now we need our function declarations. And I think that is it. Oh, well, then we have these two functions here. Just like so. So now we need to move over and do all of the actual functions themselves. So I'm just going to copy everything and move it into the CPP. Copy our A character base, and we're going to start replacing A word or character with A character base. We also need to copy the includes at the top. And here we can also remove stuff relating to the VR that we removed previously, such as the head mounted display and related to the motion controllers. Now the only thing we need to include will be the projectile. So include world at war war to war projectile dot h. Okay, I'm not seeing any issues so far. Now we just need to copy the stuff regarding the actual input. All right, just like so. Change World of War character to A character base. Just like that. And I want to go ahead and remove some of the comments that are very self explanatory because those are just taking up a lot of space or change them. So we're just going to change these. So called when turning, called when looking up slash down. And I'm going to compile. We 
we do need to set up the stuff from the constructor. But that's just to make sure we can compile. So now we copy everything inside the constructor and paste it on over and do one more compile. Okay, now we can go back into our game folder here. We see our new public folder, player folder, and our character base. So I'm going to create a new folder inside of content. I'm going to call it blueprint classes. Make a new folder inside of that. Call it player. So I'm going to create a blueprint class derived from character base. Put it inside of blueprint classes and player and call it bp underscore character base. So this is going to be our testing character that we create everything and test with. So I'm going to do a quick save, make sure we're OK. And let's add the mesh. So the mesh first person is going to be the mannequin arms. Then the animation blueprint that we're going to use is going to be the first person and BP. File save. Now we need to do the weapon, so the FP gun. So that's going to be the FP gun. Compile, save. Now click on the mesh first person, type in owner, owner only C, so that is set up correctly still. And we should be good to go there. There is no third person mesh, so we can test it out. So I want to take this, I'm going to remove it, and I'm going to drag out our test little guy. Now for testing, I want to, under search details, I want to type in possess, auto possess player, and set it to player zero. Now let's give it a try. All right, I have everything, but I do not have a gun. So let's figure out why that might be. So we can compare that with our other blueprint. Let's start looking through and see. I'm going to go ahead and just move its location. To where it's nice and where it is. Parent socket. All right, that's empty. Let's look through here. Is there anything preventing it? Not that I am seeing. So they should say the same skeleton and everything. Make sure the muzzle location is the same, which it is. All right, let's give it one more try. See if any issues are appearing in the log. So we have our moving movement and everything, but it's not actually attaching to our mesh. So we may have forgotten something, which we did. So in our begin play, we have our attach. So in character base, let's go to begin play and do our attach to component. So let's go ahead and compile. All right, now we should have the gun attached, which we do but we have no firing capabilities. So we need to set the class for it. So here we have fire sound, uh, fire 01, I think that's it. And the fire animation, is that even set? Oops. All right, so that's set to the montage. So we're gonna set that, projectile class. We're gonna do war to war projectile. Compile and save. Right, no, it's first person projectile because it's a blueprint. So my apologies. All right, so the fire sound is actually the first person template weapon fire. So we're going to set that. Compile, save, test again. Now everything is working properly. So we now have our 
new character base class that we can build everything off of. So I'm going to set that to be the default pawn. Let's go to project settings, map and modes, or is it somewhere else? Let's see, let's just search here. So pawn or default, there we are. So should have our default pawn somewhere. So we're just gonna have to set that in the actual game mode.cpp. So let's open up the World of War game mode.cpp. Here we can see the path to our first person CPP. We're gonna change that to our blueprint path. So player, right here, right click on it, go to copy reference, go back to Visual Studio, and we'll paste that in here. So we have this path with dot character base, and we can simply do underscore C, I believe. Now let's go ahead and compile. I believe the underscore C should kind of rule out with us without having to remove that. If that fails, we will simply remove everything after the period. So let's check and see. You might actually be able to see it inside of the project settings. Default pump class, BP character base. So now if we test run dedicated with two clients, we should have it. Which we seem to. Press F8, go to the ward outliner, click on this guy, BP character base. So we know that we have our base character. So that is correct and what we want. Alright, so now we have our base character class set up. It is in use. We can go ahead and remove our board at work character class. So let's close down Unreal Engine. I'm gonna go ahead and do a save. We can go over here, board at work character, .cpp and .h. Delete those. Delete our binaries. Go to source, project name, board at work character, cpp, delete, board at work character, .h, delete, Go back to Visual Studio and do Control Shift B to build. And once this finishes, we can relaunch Unreal Engine. All right, what did I miss? Word of Word Game Mode.cpp. Let's open up the game mode again. Oops, that is my mistake. We're going to change this to World at War Public Player Character Base .h and build. Okay, now we can relaunch War to War, our War to War uh, Unreal Engine project. And that character class is gone. We only have our character base, and when we go to play, we are good to go. Now I want to show you something kind of neat, because as you can probably see, there is no other person here even though I have two clients. Well, because we have owner no C set to our first person mesh, there is nothing for them to see and we have nothing set for our actual mesh. So our actual mesh, we can set that to the mannequin. We can set the animation class to third person animation blueprint. And I'm gonna go ahead and position him. Actually, that's I'm gonna go down by five. That should be about right. Eh, go up twice. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna leave it. All right. Now we need steam to rotate 90. Compile and save. Let's check it. And we're gonna go to details for type in owner. We're going to set it to owner, no C. So 
our third person mesh is set to owner no C, while our first person mesh is set to only owner C. So this allows us to have this result here. So as you can see, let me slide these over a bit. Even though they're not replicated or anything, but there are collisions. We have our mannequin that is visible as our third person character, but we are only seeing our first person arms, our first person mesh, and this is what we want. So once we start actually getting into, you know, making the base base setup for shooting and all that kind of stuff and other animations, we're going to have two sets of animations. So this first person that I see on my left side, my own client, is running off of the first person animation blueprint. While on client two, he is only seeing the third person animation blueprint because Unreal Engine thankfully takes care of everything behind the scenes. So instead of it, even though the first person mesh is hidden for client two, or the first person mesh on client one is hidden for client two, the animation blueprint for the first person mesh is not running thanks to how Unreal Engine already handles stuff when we set, for example, only owner C. So only the third person animation blueprint is running. So it's treated as a third person character essentially from the eyes of someone that is not you. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and save our project and call it right there. So we now have our character base class that we can start building and adding different functionalities to. And I think what we're going to start with is just a very basic sprinting system. Now, because this is based off of War to War, I'm going to be Googling some information for that and seeing if I can find anything that will help us kind of build it as, at least as close as possible to the system in the game. So I hope you like that, and I will see you in the next one.